All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one TV show in the history of the universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. This is the sequel to... My Heart is a Chainsaw. It's book two in a trilogy. Um, and, and so we'll get into that a little bit. Um, Stephen Graham Jones is one of my favorite new writers, favorite new horror authors. I guess he's not new. He's been writing books for a long time and has a lot of stuff published. These three books are the only ones I own of his. And they are also, all three of them, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press, the same publisher I've got. So, my editor at, uh, he sent me this arc uh, a long time ago. This is coming out. This book isn't out yet. I'm, I'm filming this in uh, December, probably 18th or 19th of uh, 2022. The book is not due out until February 7th of 23. So in a couple months it's coming out, but my editor at Simon and Schuster sent me this book uh, in the midsummer, and I and I was like, "God, that's a really this arc has been out for a long time, and there's already reviews of it on Goodreads and stuff like that." So, um, I I guess I can leave this review early. A lot of times, publishers don't want you to really leave a book review until the book is actually out. But nobody said different, even though I asked, nobody responded. I was like, "I'm gonna." Leave the review early on YouTube, and you know, it is what it is. What what can they do? Um, because it's a I'm gonna leave a good review. I loved my heart is a chainsaw. If you want to watch my review of my heart is a chainsaw, just type in my heart is a chainsaw, my last name, into your YouTube search bar, and that book review will magically appear upon your computer screen or your phone if that's what you're using. Anyway, let's talk about Don't Fear the Reaper. Uh, the uh, the uh, cover, let's talk about the covers first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. Simon & Schuster's Saga Press typically just does mm, spectacular covers. And I think that um, in the the vein of this, I mean, these are going to, if, if the hardcover, and I will buy a hardcover copy when this comes out, so I have... So I've got the, a matching set. But it looks like the spines are going to match. The covers will be similar with different little graphics. Um, I think that they're adequate covers. I don't think that uh, I, they're not blowing me away by any means. But they have similar themes. And I'll, I'll live with that because simple and similar will beat, uh, the, will beat um, complex and really wildly different all the time if that makes any sense at all. The cover for The Only Good Indians is one of my favorites I've ever seen. That's a dope cover. Anyway, what's this book about? Well, it's a sequel to this. Now, if, you, if you've if you read My Heart is a Chainsaw, you know that My Heart is a Chainsaw, that book is almost a love letter to the horror genre itself. I mean, like... Uh, just like Stranger Things, the TV show references a lot of 80s nostalgia. My Heart is a Chainsaw does the same exact thing, but it specifically kind of sticks to just the horror genre of just all the just all horror across the board throughout history, whether it's literary or movies or anything. Stephen Graham Jones is steeped in horror lore, and he puts it in here into this book. There's a character in this book named Jade who is obsessed with horror novels and horror movies and all that. And so she's got an encyclopedic knowledge of, uh, knowledge? Yeah, I think that's the word. Encyclopedic memory. Uh, I, she knows a lot about horror. And we get, it's mentioned a lot in this book. Now, this book is similar but that angle is dialed back a little bit. Now, there are a lot of references to old horror movies, old horror novels, and things like that in this book, but certainly not as much as the first book. This book is more about um, Jade, who goes by Jennifer in this book. Um, 
she believes there's a serial killer in her town. Um, and she's the only one that believes this. And there's a vast array of characters that surround Jade slash Jennifer. And they're a great cast of characters. This is just like this book it was kind of a coming-of-age novel. This book is still sort of a coming-of-age novel of our main character, young Jade, or Jennifer. Um, is there a serial killer in her town? The town is in Idaho, so we get a lot of, just like in this book, we get a lot of Idaho landscape, wilderness, small town feel to the novel. And I think that Stephen Graham Jones does a good job of nailing that down. I mean, I grew up in a small town in southern Utah, and those small towns in southern Utah are just probably pretty similar to the small towns up in Idaho. And I've driven through a lot of the small towns in Idaho, so I can vouch for this. Does a great job of capturing that feel. And a lot of the angst and anxiety that goes along with it, with young people growing up in that kind of environment. And, um especially if there may or may not be a serial killer. So is there a serial killer? We open up the book with a serial killer, a guy named Dark Mill South. Now this guy kills with machetes, branding irons, axes, hangman's nooses. And Stephen Graham Jones does a great job of opening up this book, describing all these gruesome killings and all the bloody gory Horror detail. I mean, this is why we read horror books, is because we want to, um, you know, uh, it's sensationalized. It's, it's, you know, it's like watching a train accident. It's like we can't look away, and we're fascinated by it, and we're horrified by it, and we love it. And Stephen Graham Jones jumps, dives in headfirst into this, and we get to know this uh, killer. Um, and it's kind of like he's killing, he's kind of got a purpose behind his killings. He's He's sort of making up, it's like a revenge. There were 38 Dakota men hanged in the 1862, and he's bound and determined to seek revenge upon just humanity in general for these 38 unjustified deaths that happened in uh, 1862. And so uh, he sets out to kill 38 people, and uh, he becomes the most notorious serial killer in the world. And he's in prison. Or so people think. He actually escapes prison. And now people are like, oh my God, every time someone dies in the United States, was it Dark Mill South? Did Dark Mill South do it? Oh my God. The serial killer. Like, I, I, I was young enough that I remember when Ted Bundy escaped from the Aspen County Jail. He was the most notorious serial killer in the world at the time, and he escaped out of the Aspen, Colorado Jail just because those jailers were doofuses and the jail was set up and designed by morons and so he easily escaped and um if you read if you want to read about that read the stranger beside me it is a fascinating look at ted bundy and all the stuff that went on but he most notorious serial killer in the world escaped in the 1980s and then every and, and i lived through that it, it was on the news i mean this guy got away this guy was gone he was escaped escaped prisoner for a long time and he was i mean and it was a scare like i mean uh, it just that's kind of what uh, stephen graham jones is playing off of here is kind of that fear that surrounded the ted bundy thing when he escaped I mean, ted bundy escaped and went on to keep being a serial killer and uh so that's kind of what's going on here and now jade slash jennifer is thinks that there's some deaths and some weird shit going on in her small idaho hotel and she thinks that it's dark mill south and that's pretty much the whole plot of the story of uh, these killings, this killer, um, Jade and her young friends, and the people in the town. It's just a delightful story for a serial killer horror novel murder mystery. Absolutely delightful. I give it, um, God, I give it, I give it like a, I think I liked this one a little more, My Heart is a Chainsaw, uh, but this one's still seriously dope. And so I give this a 9.5 out of 10. I just really, 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 really liked it. And I can't wait for book three to see what happens.